Season 9 is here and a lot of characters got dramatically buffed and changed. And while it's hard to see exactly what's going to be the meta going into Season 9 and beyond, we do know what characters get dramatically weaker in this season. So these are the 10 big losers in Season 9 and characters you might want to think twice about maining until they get their much needed buffs. Now it says that only 20% of you have subscribed which is a shame because we're going to be doing so many guides on Season 9 so if you want to get a leg up on the competition smash that subscribe right now and let's get into it. Now the first character on the list that gets crazy worse in Season 9 is Junkrat. And I know for a lot of you rat mains, you're going to be pretty disappointed about this because Junkrat is just so much weaker than pretty much he has ever been. Because of the health increase to a lot of characters, Junkrat is going to be far less reliable at comboing people and he's not going to be as consistent at dealing damage to them and that alone would be really detriment to the character. But even worse, Junkrat is incredibly unreliable at triggering the DPS passive. If a DPS does damage, it's going to reduce 20% of healing for 2 seconds and Junkrat just isn't going to be able to trigger that reliably and DPS that can do that very consistently are better and Junkrat is just doing that the least consistent out of basically any DPS in the roster right now so unfortunately for these reasons Junkrat is a huge loser and he's definitely in a very weak state for now now for number two we definitely got to talk about Alari and specifically the problem with Alari is the fact that Alari is just becoming a lot weaker relative to the DPS role where that was one of her biggest strengths before notably Alari got to dual DPS and oftentimes could even win but that was before DPS got this new passive that levels the playing field quite dramatically, like if you're dueling an Alari and you do some damage to her, then her own healing pylon is only going to do 80% of what it normally would do to heal her. And that's a big deal, plus with the bigger health totals, Alari's burst damage is less impactful than before, and it all kind of adds up to this character really falling behind a lot of the other supports that either have some sort of damage modification that I think are big winners, or supports that have utility that go beyond just dealing damage and applying heals. The next character that we definitely got to talk about is a pretty big loser and it's Roadhog. Now Roadhog is getting a couple of changes but more importantly than the nerfs is specifically Roadhog actually not being able to breathe nearly as reliable because even though other characters can't heal you as much when you take damage from a DPS because of the DPS passive, Roadhog it directly affects him and his kit and he's not someone that is going to be able to deny any sort of damage coming his way. He has nothing to miss mitigate that damage in fact he's a giant tanking sponge which means that he's perma gonna be on 80 percent heals from his teammates from himself and this coupled with some of the changes to the character mean that roadhog is going to be killable even without discord even without an ana in a way that he never was before and that was really why roadhog was so dominant in ranked play because he could exist and unless you had coordination combined with a nade or some form of high burst damage roadhog just wasn't killable but now you can win the battle of attrition with him you could focus him down and you're going to be able to flush him out kill him all by yourself without the need for that crazy level of focus fire dps in particular are going to be able to super punish this guy and it's making roadhog fall down the wayside more and more and more and especially because now kiriko doesn't solve all your nading problems anymore i really don't think that roadhog is going to be anywhere near as strong as he is now in fact I wouldn't be surprised if he goes down many tiers in value because like right now he's one of the best tanks in the game. You could say he's like A tier or even S tier for ranked play. Now he's going to be like probably C tier. That's how much worse he's getting. So yeah, he's a huge loser. And as someone that has been grinding Roadhog quite a bit in season eight, I think I'm going to put him on the shelf for season nine. The next up, we do got to talk about Cassidy. And Cassidy is still in this really awkward state where he doesn't really function as anything better than the many other DPS that exist. Now, especially with the higher health totals, he sometimes can't even four-shot someone in the body from range, which is just really, really bad. He's very inconsistent. His grenade is unreliable oftentimes, and Cassidy is looking to get even worse in a C where the only thing that Cassidy had going for him was he had a little bit of extra health. He could mitigate damage with his roll. Now, everyone's beefy. Everyone can kind of survive more. Cassidy's biggest strength is not even a strength anymore, and he just falls 
flat compared to a lot of other DPS. Really, the only benefit right now to Cassidy is the fact that he's a hit scan. He gets to trigger the passive really easily, but outside of that, it's just not enough. And there's other options that are just better than him, whether it's Ash, whether it's Soldier. There's so many other characters that I think get more consistent value. Cassidy is just kind of in this abyss where he doesn't have an identity and he's really weak at everything that he does compared to other characters. So I would say until we get some massive reworks from Cassidy, which we know will come down the line at some point, who knows when it will actually be here. I would say it's high noon somewhere else because it sure as hell ain't here. But anyways, let's talk about Life Weaver. And Life Weaver is somehow weaker in Season 9 than he was in Season 8. Life Weaver has consistently had this problem where there are certain strategies that work decent with Life Weaver, but Life Weaver just doesn't have anywhere near the impact as many of the other supports in the game with no types of utility that impacted the game anywhere near Lamp or Nade or Sleep or Suzu. And even though Pull is a decent ability, it did force your tank to give up all the space they claimed while just healing them up with burst heals or even Suzuing them allowed them to maintain that space. And then with really low damage and an inability to fight back any pursuer, Life Weaver was oftentimes a sitting duck where his only value was the fact that he was hard to kill. And that's pretty much it. But that doesn't really help here. I mean, yes, Life Weaver is still hard to kill, but it doesn't matter if you can't do enough to be impactful in these fights. And while attrition is good, especially in a new world where DPS attrition even better than they did before by quite a margin, and Life Weaver has no means to punish DPS in any meaningful way, Life Weaver is way weaker than he was in Season 8, and I think he was one of the weakest supports in Season 8, which means that Life Weaver is just hard garbage. Like, honestly, this might be the worst season for Life Weaver since the very beginning release for life weaver where the character came out completely underpowered and uh that's saying something the next up we do got to talk about wrecking ball poor wrecking ball a character that is definitely in need of massive reworks and a character that is going to perform even worse than he has been performing in season eight like he already isn't that good in season eight one of the worst tanks by far but in season nine bigger health totals harder to burst through these characters it's just not gonna be realistic for wrecking ball to make any sort of dent in season nine now the only thing that i could see maybe with wrecking ball is the fact that you could play wrecking ball with like a soldier off angling and you're just like creating these slam setups for your soldier and they're getting less healing because your dps are taking these angles i could see that maybe but i don't see why wrecking ball would be better than another character like doomfist or any other character wrecking ball unfortunately just is kind of lagging behind the rest of the roster and he's just not allowed to operate in the way that he wants to not to mention there's a lot of characters that can really punish wrecking ball overall this character's in a pretty bad spot he has been for quite some time and it doesn't look like things are getting any better in fact they look like they're getting worse in season nine so wrecking ball mains until we get that rework that is probably coming down the pipeline i'll probably put this character to rest but who am i kidding you're gonna lock him anyways now we got to talk about Hanzo and now Hanzo only one shots less than five characters in the entire roster. You heard me right. That's all he freaking one shots. And you might be saying, good, great. Hanzo's finally not going to one shot me. Thank goodness. But the problem is Hanzo's power directly revolves around his one shot and while he is getting storm arrow buffed which is fine and he actually now has a passive because before the reload passive did nothing and the damage passive actually does something or the healing reduction passive actually does something hanzo isn't going to be able to trigger that as reliable as hit scans can and without that one shot with not really enough to compensate for the lack of a one shot hanzo's just underwhelming like really if you're gonna remove the one shot from hanzo which is effectively what they did and i don't think that's a bad thing but you need to change up his power in some other regard projectos even though they're easier to hit are going to be less reliable to hit than hit scans by far so storm arrow in my opinion should have become a completely different ability if you're going to keep hanzo like this if you're going to make it so hanzo can't one shot that's fine you got to give him power in some other way it doesn't have to be one shot power it just has to be something something to give him a little bit of an edge compared to some of these hit scans that can trigger the passive easier than hanzo once again it feels like he gets the short end of the stick compared to characters like ash characters like even sojourn characters like soldier and i really do think that the only way that hanzo is decent is if somehow damage boosted hanzo becomes a thing I just still don't think it's going to be reliable enough, but perhaps with the easier to hit projectiles and the damage boost, maybe damage boost Hanzo actually becomes strong because now you can one shot like the entire roster. 
But I'm really unsure about that, and it seems a little bit too gimmicky to become meta. But if Hanzo does become meta, it's going to be 100% because of a Mercy Pocket. And I still think it could be okay in ranked play, but it's, once again, probably way too unreliable and a little bit too gimmicky. But I guess it depends on just how easy it is to hit these projectile shots in the hands of someone that's skilled. Now, next up, this is one that a lot of people are not going to expect. Kirko is on here as a big loser in Season 9. And this might seem really bizarre to people. Like, what? Kirko's the most busted character. How could you put Kirko on this list? And there's a couple of reasons for that. I think, namely, because of the health totals increasing, which is a big deal, Kiriko is going to be just less reliable as a DPS character. Someone that can actually deal damage. There's a lot of characters that Kiriko can dink twice and they don't care. They're just going to shrug it off, which is actually kind of cool. Kiriko is going to lose a lot of these 1v1s where before she's going to win. And if she does body shots all the time, she's doing like no damage. So these are all benefits to DPS over Kiriko in duels where Kiriko has consistently been winning those up to this season. In addition to that, Kiriko's projectile is not getting buffed like other projectiles, so it's still rather hard to hit relative to what the new standard is going to be. And another thing is, Kiriko doesn't heal that much relative to other supports. So specifically, there are times when a Kiriko's really struggling to like keep a tank up, especially if your other support is like a Mercy pocketing DPS or a Zen or someone that is like a Lucio or whatever the case may be. You're like trying to take the role of that main healer, the one that is predominantly healing your team but you just don't have the juice to do it now under 80 percent with the new dps passive it's going to be even harder you're going to spend even more time heal botting to get people up and you're worse at dpsing spending more time heal botting but a lot of your value comes from the cycle of you being aggressive and you're worse at doing that so all of this combined kind of adds to the picture that kiriko is just gonna be a weaker pick than she was before and I understand that Suzu is super, super strong. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't see Suzu mattering as much in these super slow attrition fights that don't happen all at once. Yeah, you're going to see Kiriko and Dive and in the hands of someone that's really, really good, they can get value out of Kiriko. I just think that this is probably going to be the worst season for Kiriko, even in the higher tiers in a long time. And Kiriko already has a negative win rate in most ranks of play. So I really think, especially if you're lower than the Masters rank, Kiriko is going to be, like, actually bad. And then if you're Masters or above, she's only going to be good in specific strategies. And most of the time, there's going to be other supports that are going to win in ranked a lot easier. So, yeah, worst season for Kiriko. Maybe you're happy about that. Maybe you're sad about that. But I think it's actually true. Now, next up, we do got to talk about a big loser in Season 9, and it's undoubtedly Malga. I mean, he's a big character that can't deny being damaged for the same reasons that, like, Hog can't. His heal comes from his damage and that's going to be mitigated i mean it's pretty much all the same reasons that i said that hog is a big loser malga is even a bigger loser in this season and when we cover the 10 big winners, you're going to see that tanks that have a way to cut off the enemy from dealing damage to them, allowing them to get out from under the passive, that's going to be a really big deal. Malga can't do that. Malga's just going to get completely sauced on. I think he's probably going to be one of the worst tanks in Season 9. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely putting him 9 on this list. Now, last but certainly not least is a character that doesn't necessarily get that much worse, but she doesn't get better, and she really didn't get anything in this patch, and it's Widowmaker. Widowmaker is not going to be very reliable. One shots and burst damage is just at an all-time low, and while Widow could probably see a tiny bit of play on some of the sniper maps, the long-distance maps, on most maps, Widow is just going to be very unreliable and inconsistent, and overall, she's been a loser for quite a few seasons, and I think that she gets even worse in Season 9, although I do think that she will see a little bit of play here and there, and probably the strongest out of all of these losers on the list but she narrowly makes it into our 10 slot and honestly all these characters are kind of on the chopping block for being characters that are desperately in need of compensation buffs or compensation reworks as we change into the new overwatch 3 season 9 meta so yeah definitely let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my takes and smash that subscribe so you don't miss out on 10 big winners in season 9 and all of the other season 9 guys that we have coming in store for you check out the patreon if you want private coaching or if you want to check out some of my in-depth guides that you can only find on the patreon thank you and we'll see you next time.